Um, we're talking about personal and planetary healing from multidimensional sexual enslavement today, which I think is a highly relevant topic to um, the subjects of this week's class. So just as an intro to uh, share my um, credentials, <laughs> Okay. Hello everybody, I am Z, Earth Star Healer. Today um, we are sharing a lecture called Sexuality and Creation for the week six of Corey Good's Accelerating Ascension course. I am Z, Earth Star Healer. We are talking about personal and planetary healing from multidimensional sexual enslavement today, which I think is a highly pertinent discussion for the topics of this week's class. So just as a quick intro, this is my credentials. Um, I am Z, Earth Star Healer. I'm an embodied wanderer, uh, meaning I remember where I'm from, what I was doing, where I was from, and why I've come here at this time. So my most recent lifetimes out in the universe, I was a light field geneticist from Andromeda. I'm beginning to remember the ways that we study and understand science from those dimensions of reality. In this specific lifetime, I was in the seventh dimension, um, and it's actually taken the last seven years of highly devoted um, commitment to this reality that I have actually begun to fully integrate and embody that part of myself. So um, the seven years of training included shamanic bird work training with my ancestors, um, with my masters in the astral plane, and teachers, and Gaia, interdimensional ETs, my Andromedan and Pleiadian guides, um, and of course, plant medicine. And um, over the seven years, I studied the reality through my own perceptive abilities and inner knowing. So that means I was, um, you know, as I arrived here on this planet, and as this geneticist from Andromeda, that part of me started looking around to see the interdimensional and multidimensional aspects of this reality so that I could get a good idea of really what's happening here, right? This is happening with my inner knowing through my own brain and my own eyes. Um, so at this point in time, I would say that I'm an agent of the inner aspects of disclosure. So how this whole control system that whoever was created by, whatever agents um, were per perpetuating it, meaning the military and the hospitals and the education systems, whatever agents were perpetuating this false reality, how has that affected every single person, human, on this planet, and how every person has the responsibility to move through our healing, to re-restore um, our sense of divinity, and to actually access our own multidimensionality, because this is the really important thing that we all have to do. So I would call myself a self-healing and multidimensionality activation coach, shamanic healer, and higher self-integration guide. So the crux of my teachings is actually a combination of multidimensional light, gen light field genetics and um, the ancient studies of Taoism, which is what my earth ancestry is. So it's a cool amalgamation of these two energies. Um, I call it the mechanics of creation, and you know, many of you have maybe read up into Tao's teachings. They're very much about the law of one. It's this um, kind of more integrated and human way of perceiving and explaining this oneness and seeing that all of the universe is um, animated by the single force of life, and we understand that this life interacts with itself, and that's why we say as above, so below, as within, so without. So in the beginning, we explore what the human body really is. The human vessel was created to be a home of the divine sovereign creator being. So if we zoom all the way out beyond all of our lifetimes into the beginning of time, we are all in this field of oneness, of aliveness, this consciousness, right? this original consciousness. And this original consciousness before anything was in creation at all 
had already imagined everything that would be in creation, and that is to say everything. And so in that moment of that thought, we decided that we wanted to experience ourselves as this cosmic um, unified force of consciousness in single bodies that are able to experience uh, more dimensions of experience itself. So we thought we were going to create these human vessels that are going to be aware of ourself as divine sovereign creator beings. So from that perspective, as I landed here on earth, um, obviously nothing made sense because as I looked around in the world, um, it seemed like nobody was aware of the fact that they were a divine sovereign being. You know, there was the rat race, people went to school, most people had no fun at all. And I was like, wait a minute, people are not, uh, people are in complete forgetfulness of this truth that we are divine sovereign creator beings. And so I began to research and study. Um, actually, my guides would often take me out to the shopping mall. They would sit me there and I would just sit there and scan energy bodies. I would scan the energetics of the mall. I would scan the energetics of the ads. And this was actually how I came to my understandings about the multidimensional uh, prison system of the earth and of course everything happens for a reason I'm not sharing any of this to share fear but really to explain to you that humanity is experiencing a lesson on creative responsibility so for a long 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 time we and many agents of this forgetting um, have been creating an ignorance and separation from higher self or our one source or our oneness so these beings agreed to fall and play the bad guys to create a world of pain and separation so that we can all experience being fallen and separated from our divine creatorhood to understand that that is something we can do, right? In this universe of free will, being free will creator beings, this is something that we can do. But what is that thing that tells us that that's not what we're supposed to do is this sense of responsibilities, the sense of compassion, the sense that we don't want to hurt each other, but we actually want to align with the universal principles of love and divinity and creation. And so how this does, what this does is that it brings our awareness back into ourselves and say, what is this experience doing for me on a soul level? Um, instead of, you know, being like, oh, you know, the government is doing this and the, the society is doing this and all of these people are evil, reining it back and moving our awareness into an expanded place and say, well, what is my soul here to do? So we are here to gain, to learn, and to participate um, in this process of learning about creative responsibility, what it truly takes and what it truly means to be a divine sovereign creator being. And in that process of gaining and learning and participating in those things, we are accelerating our own and our planetary ascension process. So let's explore the concept of a divine sovereign creator being. And I promise you all of these things are going to weave together beautifully in the end. And we're gonna understand why all of this is so important for us to talk about when we're talking about the feminine and the masculine and our relationships and so on and so forth, right? This is kind of the root of things we have to get to. So the science of incarnation is the process of spirit coming into flesh. And this is really the study of genetics because the genetic blueprint of a being is um, the structure within which the spirit desires to walk into the flesh. And so the, 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 the genetics is really the template or the blueprint for the vessels um, that the spirits are designing. Okay, so where I come from as a geneticist, we're not studying science for any reason besides the fact that we love creation so much. We love the universe and all of life, and we just want to be closer to this oneness of the divine. And we want to understand it even in this complex and intellectual way so that we can, can, we can participate in the co-creation process. Okay? So from that level of understanding, um, we understand that our consciousness spirit vessel, a body, is designed to holographically interact with the external reality. So we have all actually experienced this already in synchronicity, the repeating numbers, etc. This is actually just the beginning phase of this activation. It is us 
recognizing that what's happening inside is actually directly related to what's manifested or what is existing on the outside, as within, so without. And this is not just an intellectual concept, but actually really how this holographic reality works, that our body and our vessel and our consciousness was created and designed to have this interplay between the inside and the outside, this process of creation between um, our inner self and the external self. So this interaction between our consciousness and the external reality is an ongoing process of co-creation when we are in a state of sovereignty, meaning when we are clear and it's only our soul that is choosing the experiences that we have and that it's our soul that is actually creating and co-creating with other souls um, the co-existent reality that we have. This is a state of sovereignty. So clearly... This creational power has been hijacked for reasons that we talked about in the previous slide. And understanding how this hijacking has happened in our multidimensional body is essential to healing and reclaiming our divine sovereign creatorship. And so through this, we're gonna go through the three Dantian, which, are, which is kind of a creation-based um, chakra system from the Taoist uh, studies. So when these three centers are operating correctly, we are creating in free will. I'm going to explain more here. So first let us explain what energetic sovereignty is. Right? A lot of people say, you know, we have free will on this planet. And so everybody is choosing to experience whatever. And while that was true on a certain level, um, it is also free will to give up your free will, right? So energetic sovereignty means that you are expressing and acting and thinking and interacting with the reality outside of oppressive forces of societal conditions, what other people think, traumas and patterns in your energy body. So for example, if you actually really want to be going to the beach, but then you know it's Monday morning, you actually have to go to work. Are you completely sovereign? No, you are you know, acting within the society societal condition and there's so many different levels of this right even down to the way that we express ourselves so if you look at you know the high school students who all kind of have the swag and they all express themselves in the same way are those souls expressing or are those um, mental and intellectual programs and geometries that they've been programmed with that are expressing and when those programs are expressing then the soul cannot express through the body and we're going to explain why here so imagine the body is a vessel and layers of geometries and vibrational patterns of energy. Okay, that's what we are. These patterns can either be organic or conditioned. The organic is the original genetic template which allows our soul and consciousness energy to free slowly, to free, to flow freely through our body. We inherit distorted energy patterns from our parents, our culture, and traumas which disrupt the flow of energy, leading us to express ourselves in inorganic or inauthentic ways, right? This is really deep because many of us experience this, um, you know, we feel like we have to act a certain way to be accept accepted by others, or we have to dress in a certain way when we go to work. Um, we can't just like be ourselves because we have to be proper or polite or sexy or whatever it is all of these little um, vibrational patterns that impose themselves upon our energy um, not to mention you know all of the sexual programming that we're going to move into so this expands into these dimensions of our life from the way we talk we think we relate to people to our work and profession to how we understand reality and what we accept as normal all of those patterns are overlaid on top of us so we're not able to actually just be ourselves, right? So when we're um, under the oppression of all of those layers of energy, we are actually controlled. And even if we think we have free will, we're actually acting from the um, influence of those energies. So free will is a potential and is actually cosmic law. However, certain cosmic laws have been broken in that and right now at this moment on the planet it is not a norm and it is not just given right 
The majority of humans are not living in a place of energetic sovereignty, even if they think they have choices. Humanity has been multidimensionally enslaved, and the bars of our enslavement are distorted beliefs, genetic distortions, traumas, and our limited understanding of reality. So this is highly relevant in our discussion about navigating psychic and energetic attacks. So let's read this. Human bodies are vibrational and resonant. In our field, if our body is totally healthy and we're totally integrated in our knowing that we are divine sovereign beings, and that means all layers of our body, not just our mind, you know, all layers, there's not any subconscious part that has any doubt or confusion about it. So we feel it, we embody it, we live it, we express it, and every moment is this knowing that we are divine sovereign beings. If this was fully integrated, then there would be no psychic or energetic attack because no part or layer of us would be creating or resonating with that reality. There is no hole for any of the oppressive energies to actually enter our body. So psychic attacks and astral implantation is a great way to discover our weaknesses and our holes in our consciousness and energy body. So as we're discovering that we are holographic creator beings, creation doesn't just happen from our mind, but from our entire energetic makeup. Waking up to our creatorhood is actually the beginning. Excavating our multidimensional bodies and consciousness to release and restore all of these distorted programs to bring us back into a place of our divine knowingness, this process takes time. And this is really something that everyone needs to be focusing on because just as we awaken with our mind and we think, oh, we're divine, um, this sometimes can be a glass ceiling that keeps a lot of light workers in a certain stagnant place where it's like, I know I'm a divine creator being, but I still have to go to my matrix job because there's no other reality that is possible. Uh, I know that I'm a star seed, but I'm still gonna eat this GMO food right now because you know there's other parts of me that are clearly still running the show. So as you can see, it's not enough to just awaken for a moment in our mind, but actually to fully embody that. It takes time to excavate our body because if we have lived as a humanity outside of this knowing for thousands of years, Right? Possibly longer, but for thousands of years, we have lived believing that we are a slave species, believing that we are, you know, lower than creator beings. It's going to take some time for us to restore all of these dimensions of our individual and our collective planetary self. So here is how we do it. In the Taoist teachings, um, and the Taoist, Taoism is not really a religion, but it's actually a study. So they're really scholars that study the reality through their own perception and through relating to the universe and recognizing that this aliveness permeates through all things and that this aliveness that permeates through all things is what we call as God or the divine. And actually that same energy moves through us. And so we are that divine God creature. And through that union, we can communicate and receive the information that we need uh, to understand what our human body is, that is a divine creator being, but how that vessel actually works, right? It's not just saying we're creator divine beings, but really understanding how our light and physical energy bodies work to create reality. And this has been totally messed up in this process of losing our creatorhood so we're going to go through that, okay? The three Dantians are the three creation centers in our body. The higher Dantian around our head, the middle Dantian in our heart, and the lower Dantian, which is our sexual and our womb organs. So as you can see, the higher Dantian is our imagination. It connects the spirit and our mind, right? This is a weaving. The co-creation process is not just what we think we want to create, but also what spirit inspires us to create. And when we're in a place of alignment, those two things are oftentimes the same thing. Okay? So this is a place where our imagination and inspiration and dreams all meld into one. And when this energy is aligned, which is in the brain here, when this energy is aligned, it's the part that of, of ourselves that becomes inspired. It receives information and guidance, but also inspiration from our inner children, all these parts of us 
that decide what we would like to create, what makes us most excited. It's not like God is like, okay, now you do this. That's like the slavery system, right? It's not that God is telling you what to do, but more that as we align our heart, it's like our, our inner children are desiring to create something that would bring fun and joy and enjoyment to all beings. And usually that is something that you know, spirit wants as well. So the false programs that exist in the center, get a job, be a slave, need to survive, do what makes the most money. And relating to our sexuality, it's dirty, it's shameful, it's sinful, it's painful, etc. So you can see how these false programs block off access of our true creative process, which is our connection to inspiration and our inner, our inner excitement. So say that we get a, and uh, a lot of people in this group here probably um, will need this information to understand how to create into the organic matrix because this is how we uh, disintegrate the false matrix is by um, no longer co-creating with it. And you know that process is the process of taking creative responsibility, meaning you are responsible to create a new reality and by, by um, the way that we do that is actually to reprogram our own creational system so that we're no longer resonating and creating in geometries of the false reality. So we're not perpetuating that, right? We're leaving the false matrix, so to speak. Um, and so this is really the roadmap on how we do that. So we move, we receive this amazing idea. I know a lot of people want to build a healing center or build a new course or just start a new career, whatever it is, write a book. Today is write a book. That's a very simple creation. We have the seed come into our inspiration, our mind, our inner children are really excited. We're like, yes, we're going to write a book. I'm really excited about this. So this idea then kind of comes in through our energy system and moves into the heart. Right? And this is where, this is our center of motivation. So the middle Dantian, the heart slash motivation, is the energy of purity, of love, devotion, and morality. And this is where we, di we discern if it's unconditional love that is the motivation of our creative process. It is the devotion to our service or creation. Does it benefit ourself? And does it benefit everyone that is touched by our creation? So, of course, in our society, in our world, we have seen people that, you know, create out of false programs of self-worth, like, oh, you know, I'm just going to create this, I'm going to screw everybody over, I'm going to make lots of money. Um, distorted motivation, right? And are we creating out of conditional love? Are we acting out of motivations of jealousy, competition, power, wealth, especially at the expense of others? So we have this idea that we're going to write this book. That was just our first example. This really could be anything. This is a process of creating anything here. Um, so this book comes through and you're like, oh, this book is actually, I'm really excited about it because it's going to bring love and healing and awakening to people. So then our motivation is aligned. And this is actually when our creational machine starts to get really activated. And we're really excited. We feel this activation, this warmth in our body. And so when this creation passes through this gate of motivation and love, we're like, yes, this is an aligned creation. It's created out of the right motivation of unconditional love. It continues to move down through our energy system and enters the lower Dantian. Now, if your energy system is aligned correctly, you will actually become sexually aroused, right? This is a very deep discussion. We're finally getting into the sexuality part of it because we call this transmission healing from planetary sexual enslavement. And because um, if you look around the world, there is a lot of sexual distortion happening um, in the mind control systems of our world, okay? And it's because our sexual energy is how we experience creational energy in our physical vessel. Our sexual energy is our creative energy. And we actually have been duped into believing that our sexual energy is good for nothing except having crazy, stupid sex and for making babies. While actually it is everything that is created with our sexual energy. Projects, books, money, 
you know, realities, <laughs> everything at all is channeled and created through our sexual energy. So if you're somebody that has been wanting to leave the false matrix and create a new career or write that book or, you know, create a new business and it's just not happening, probably because sexual energy is blocked and it's not your fault. You know, there has just been every single programming and the other that is trying to hijack this energy from us. So desire, passion, raw, creative, life force, energy. When this energy is aligned, it is the powerhouse of our creativity, energy to materialize our dreams and inspiration. However, the majority of humans is existing in a place where there's trauma, ancestral trauma, MK Ultra, pornography, mind control, programming transference, shame, guilt, trapped lower vibrational emotions, all of those things and religious programming are hindering the flow of our creative energy. Okay, how do I know this? Well, it's not difficult. Um, so this is just a chart um, that you can take a screenshot of and actually go through the process of assessing, um, you know, where in the process you are in becoming a responsible creator. So I'm just gonna leave this up for a second, take a screenshot, um, and then we'll move on here. Okay, so we're talking about the hijacking of our creatorship, okay? And in my role as a multidimensional healer, I travel all over the world on grid work missions, um, again, I have, when I was training, my guys were literally just, you know, pulling me into a shopping mall and making me scan everything with my psychic abilities. And so um, I ended up at a Ariana Grande concert. It was so aligned. I didn't even know who she was, okay? No idea who she was. And then for three days, her face was just everywhere. <laughs> it was the process of synchronicity. She was on billboards. She was on buses. One night, my my Spotify on my phone just turned on and started blaring her songs. Um, and I was like, what is going on? Who is this person? And this happened for a whole three days until on the third day, I got a call from coincidentally my ex-boyfriend. was like, hey, are you in town? I'm going to an Ariana Grande concert. I was like, no way you were going to an Ariana Grande concert. And I hadn't seen him in like five years. So I was like, very strange. I ended up going to this concert because I knew I was supposed to be there. And it was like one of these major stellar alignments, you know, some new moon crazy thing. And I was like, okay, got to go to this concert. So brief pause. Sexual energy is the energy which creates all things. It's how we experience cosmic creative energy inside of our physical vessel. And we can create heaven or hell. The true state of human consciousness is one of love, reverence, respect, and devotion to life itself. And so this is a true state of just consciousness itself, not just human consciousness, but in fact, consciousness that permeates through all things. It is one of love, reverence, respect, and devotion to life itself, the oneness of all of creation. And through this portal of love, we wield the power of co-creation, a dance between the self and the infinite. So the simplest way to explain satanic culture is the absence of these qualities of original consciousness. So consciousness void of these qualities can be described as fallen, satanic, artificial, and in separation. So while the most exaggerated form um, is satanic ritual and sexual and blood sacrifice of animals and children and people like the elite are doing, um, watered down version of this culture permeates our whole society, right? Why is it that the elites do these crazy rituals? It is because they are, you know, creating a control system where they're actually using this using our sexual energy to create a reality where we are um controlled and we are separate from this divinity right so through normalizing rape violence and non-reverence to life this watered down version of the satanic ritual or the satanic culture permeates our whole society affecting all people this is a very important thing to integrate because we can very easily point our fingers and say, oh, well, that person's a pedophile and that person needs to go to jail and all oh, these poor children. 
but actually we need to turn that energy inwards and say, wow, that energy has been actually grooming us, <laughs> you know, using our, our um, mind controlling our parents to perpetuate this false reality, so also known as grooming, um, through cultural mind control programming, pornography, that they have been distorting our own organic vessels and consciousness, not just the children who are abducted and abused, but every single person on this planet pretty much. If you grew up in this culture and you went to school and you ate junk food and you watched TV and pornography, you know, the, this distorting energy has reached our own consciousness. If we're not in a space of ultimate love, reverence, respect, and devotion for all of life itself, we're not merged with that love of oneness of all of creation. You know, there are parts of ourselves that carry this satanic geometry. And pain, trauma, and misery keeps our vessel and energy body from feeling orgasmic and good, which means we're separate from our divine creativity. This is the main reason why we have not created heaven on earth yet is that we have come into awareness and we have awakened to a certain extent, but we have not fully reclaimed our creational vessel. Because if we have, then the power of our creatorship would be much greater than any of the satanic BS that's happening. You know, it's just that we have not actually fully integrated and gone in to do this deep reprogramming work in ourselves to really recognize how this satanic culture has really infiltrated into our own consciousness and our own DNA. So when we excavate ourself, um, we're actually reclaiming our energy um, from this reversal field. And when we reclaim our energy, we're able to anchor it in the organic reality. And that is to say, creating a whole new world. Some people call this the new earth. It's not just happening to us. We're actually creating it. And that's the whole point of why we're here is to remember and to learn about creator responsibility. Okay. So coming back to, you know, Miss Ariana Grande here, I was actually at her concert. I was just looking at her and I was wondering, is this a, you know, just a mind controlled person? Is this actually a technologically bioengineered being? Um, and lo and behold, this giant moon comes down and it just kind of like rests on the stage and it was giant, the whole stage, okay? It was a giant moon. And this voice in my ear said, Google moon chain lineage. And of course, I never heard of this before. I went and searched moon chain lineage. Of course, it's this article um, about uh, Gray and Zeta, um, bioengineered beings that perpetuate what is called sexual misery programming. And when I'm looking at this Ariana Grande on stage, you know, dancing in her little skirt, looking like a young, young person, an underage person, everybody in that hall, there must have been like 50,000 people listening to this concert. Most of them were young girls between the age of six and 16. Okay. And then there's this role model signaling on stage that everybody was like, oh my God, I look up to you. You're this amazing being. And she's shaking her little butt and singing about like the most distorted sexual things ever. And of course, this is just proof. I mean, it's one thing to watch Illuminati re revealed <laughs> videos on YouTube, but a totally different thing when you have your psychic abilities open and you're in the amphitheater and you're watching energy systems of this being interacting with those people, you know, in the audience. This is real. Of course, everybody that watches TV or have watched TV, you're always exchanging energy fields with what we're eating um, vibrationally, what we're intaking. So, okay. Ooh, take a moment. <laughs> this is really deep stuff because we're really talking about how this energy has influenced and infiltrated into our own energy body. And this is not a comfortable conversation to have, but is extremely important because, again, what is our most important job? It is to heal and reclaim our own creatorship. What is every single program and, and distraction trying to do? keep you from doing that, right? 
go and read this book. Go and read that disclosure news. Go and watch this movie. Go and take this course. Every single thing is like, okay, I need more information. I need more information. But at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is how far that information has really moved down through the body because it is not rocket science, right? This is not like stuff that you need to like study, but the only thing is to put it into practice. To really feel all of the distortions and traumas that are keeping us from being absolutely free, from us from feeling like we are divine and reverent beings in our sexual self, on knowing that our sexuality is innocent naturally it is divine, right? Not just the concept or the understanding of it, but the true embodiment and the expression of that. It's actually really simple. We have been sharing all of these self-healing techniques in the meditations over the last few weeks. These four techniques are the simplest, but the most potent self-healing techniques that I personally have come into connection with. And I've been doing this work for a very long time. So um, these practices are very potent. And for the very simple process of excavating and clearing out distortions in our body so that our divine soul, which is in resonance with the oneness of all that is, this divine consciousness, can actually take hold and live inside the vessel and express and create as itself. So the sexual misery programming oscillates even in, um, you know, she's saying like, oh, I'm going to take your boyfriend. Like, you should just break up with your boyfriend because I'm going to kiss him. Like, jealousy, whatever. You know, that whole energy. It's so deeply ingrained in our human society. Just think about all of the parents who are like, well, we don't really love each other, but we're going to stay together for the kids. And then they have this really weird, blaming relationship, subconsciously very... Um, passive aggressive all of those feelings tangle up our sexual energy and it's like why heartbreak is so normalized in our world as well um, because again we want to wrangle up and create this pain in our energy system so we're not free flowing so we're not experiencing orgasmic energy through our whole body and creating a world of love um, and this is very important we're talking about our vessels because we think about I'm um, giving birth. You know, we are literally birthing realities, right? We're birthing people into realities. And this is why hospitals are such crazy places. Um, but we think about like if there's a lot of pain and trauma in our sexual organs or in any part of our body, but if the sexual organs have really been targeted in this society. You know, with the satanic sexual rituals and pedophilia, like it's all very sexual. Why? Because sexual energy actually creates realities. And in order to create a fallen control system of a reality that can actually control billions of divine creator beings, that takes a lot of energy, a lot of reversal control energy. So this is why they perform these kinds of rituals, these kinds of pedophilic rituals, so that they can harness that energy to create this false world. However, energy is always flowing through your vessel. You're also always creating. And so if they can distort and create all this pain and trauma in your energy body, then you are also co-creating with the false reality. Okay? So imagine if you actually had the energies of peace and divine love and reverence again, all of those beautiful, expansive energies, if your body actually was oscillating in that vibration all the time, this world would be very different because you are just as powerful as a creator being, if not more, than you know any other person. An activated energy body is thousands of times more potent than energy bodies that are not. And so this is a really important point that I have been driving home, but I will continue to drive home, and is that you have the responsibility to reclaim yourself as a creative being. Because whether you are creating consciously or unconsciously, you are still creating. Okay? It's just when you're asleep, you can kind of say, well, you know, I was asleep, so this is kind of, this excuses me from taking responsibility for everything. 
But now that you soul, your soul has chosen to awaken. You're taking this course called Accelerating Ascension. So your soul has really decided to fully awaken. And to fully awaken means that you are recognizing that you have a human body. You are a divine consciousness. You are actually a divine creator being. And in order to take responsibility for this creation, the very most important thing we must do is to heal our energy system so that we are organically creating the organic reality and not the control matrix. Okay? This is important because, first of all, there are projects and businesses and books and everything else that you want to create that will not come through your body easily if your energy system was not aligned. But secondly, if there is distortions, then you are still creating the false reality. And in the case that you're awakened, then you will be consciously co-creating with the control system. Okay? So how do we know if we are clear? Well, you just have to do the practice. You just have to go inside and really get to know yourself and your energy system. So in the final slide here, we're talking about the feminine and the masculine, the forces of creation. This is a subject that has been so heavily distorted in our world. Again, because these are forces of creation, just like our sexual energy, right? And in order to create a false reality and take away our creational abilities as divine sovereign beings, we have to distort the, mas the masculine and feminine energies and take them away from you and create all this confusion inside of it. But the truth is, that the yin energy, the feminine energy, and the yang energy, the masculine energy, are creational forces which are inherent and innate within each other. They are not separate at all. So you can see in this yin-yang symbol, there is yin inside the yang and other way around as well. So there are yin aspects of yang and there are yang aspects of yin, and the two exist intertwined organically. What are we talking about here? Is that if you are a woman, you have both the feminine energy and the masculine energy inside of you. And if you are a man, you still have the feminine energy and the masculine energy inside of you. And that actually this whole agenda to say there's the feminine on this side and the masculine on this side is actually part of the control system to create separation and to create splitting of these two forces. So the splitting of these energies have been weaponized as a tool of control and destruction. The control grid is actually created and sustained by the continual splitting of these forces. So by splitting and also reversing these energies, okay? creating extreme trauma and distortion on our human and planetary consciousness. So I could go deeper into this about all the ways that we have been tricked into believing certain things about these forces. For example, that the sun is masculine and that the moon is feminine. This is a part of the moon matrix reversal um, because when you think about it, the moon actually receives all of its light from the sun. So this is akin to saying women came from man's rib. Okay? There is no man in the history of the planet that came that did not come out of a woman, right? So women actually give birth. Women are the bodies, female bodies are the ones that carry the baby and give birth to it. So we perpetuate life. So to say that, you know, the moon receives, the moon is feminine, the moon, the moon represents women, and that it receives all of its light from the sun, this itself is a very subconscious piece of mind control programming, okay? Why do we want a society of patriarchy? Patriarchy is not about what men or women do, not about what males have done to females, not at all, because the patriarchal system has damaged and traumatized the males just as much as the females. Okay? And I know that there's a lot of um, us who are women, we have a lot of confusion and anger towards males, and that's exactly what the control system wants us to feel is to blame the males because then we're scared of them and then we can't come into a union with them and etc. Okay? And so also for the males, you know, when we think about circumcision and the kind of implications that that has on the male's ability to be vulnerable, right? When males are not able to be vulnerable or not able to connect with their inner 
feminine aspects, then they can be weaponized to um, wound the feminine. And then the feminine will have the wounds in the womb. Of course, the female bodies, sorry, I meant female, not feminine. The female bodies give birth. And if the females are traumatized, then the babies are automatically birthed into a trauma fallen reality. So they've really tricked us all to work together to perpetuate this false reality. Okay, so now we have to all work together to recognize that there is the feminine energy and the masculine energy inside us all, that we have to come into awareness of these energies inside of us in order to reconcile those energies, you know, in our personal relationships. And it all comes back down to love, reverence, respect, and devotion to life itself, right? To recognize where in ourself the satanic culture has been normalized, where in ourself we don't feel that deep connection and love and respect. Because life void of these deep sensations of being alive is the ultimate severing between matter and spirit, the ultimate separation between us and source. And just as a final closing here, we say women carry children and give birth. Birth is life, so women perpetuate life. And so this culture of anti-women, of not encouraging and not recognizing the female body, that we have all been. Every single soul incarnates in both female and male and even other um, gendered bodies, you know, on some other planet. So anti-women equals anti-life, and anti-life is the satanic culture. So once again, we're just being asked to go inside to check out all the places where we are oppressing our own union, our own love, our own expression of the sacred energy, our own distortions of these sacred energies. And as we recognize that, you know, this control system has been using these forces and the distortions of these forces to control humanity, we can begin to actually send forgiveness to all the people that we believe have caused us harm. Because we understand that at the end of the day, all humans, all of humanity, we are organically these divine creator beings, but the system has really created these distortions to um, convince us to create a fallen reality. And so it's not a, none of those people's fault that hurt us. It's just, you know, the false reality. And so we can really begin to send forgiveness and let those things go. Let those individual karmic experiences go. And recognize that we are creator beings, that we really have the responsibility of creating our reality and that every experience of hurt or pain or distortion in our external reality is actually showing us that there is still part of us that has not fully been healed, has not fully been reintegrated. And this is a long process. This process of healing started seven years ago for me. Um, I have been practicing daily and doing everything to clear the false matrix away from my body and there are still things that I'm working on, right? So it just comes down to our willingness and our commitment to the self-healing process. There is absolutely nothing more important than us reclaiming our multidimensional creational bodies. And with that, uh, I hope you enjoyed this transmission. Um, and I love you all so much. Uh, my name is Z, Earth Star Healer. You can find a lot of my teachings and shamanic healing um, recordings on YouTube by searching Earth Star Healer. Um, and I will catch you sometime, someplace. Bye for now.